Oh, Jesus, here we are another day with wonderful faces and people. This is for you, Lord. Today is for your glory and not man's. So, Jesus, you know how I do. i got to give you all the glory because that's just the best way to work you. So, Jesus, everything that happens in this place today is for you. You will be glorified. The testimony of these people's lives will go far and wide about what you're doing in the earth today. Because you are that light that pushes back the darkness. And you are the father of lights. And there's a lot of lights in here. So Jesus, turn the heat up on us. Let us burn for you. And the church saves. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. How many of you believe the presence of Jesus is here now? How many of you are familiar with the presence of Jesus? You know, it should become just who we are. It should become our normal. We should be so saturated by the presence of God that we can't tell if it's here or it's not. Because we're just a part of it. You understand? Yes. When you're a glory carrier, you're used to it. Now, now hold on. It increases sometimes. You gotta get used to it again. But then again, and again, and again. As you go from glory to glory and fade to fade. So you really don't get used to it, but I'm just playing with you, alright? So just keep going from glory to glory. Never get content when it comes to the things of the Lord. Don't get comfortable. Stay hungry. Huh? And here's one more thing before I go into the Word. I'm telling you this. Whatever Jesus does for you today, talk about it. Yes. Amen? You don't even have to say my name. Just tell them what Jesus has done for you. Amen? When Jesus heals you, tell the next person. When Jesus delivers you, tell him. Tell people about it. When he fills you with the Holy Ghost, tell him about it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So whatever happens today, please, by all means, go to the priest. Let him check you out. <laughs> That's in the Bible. But you know what I'm saying. Tell him. Because the priest is here. His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen? All right. Now, I know some of y'all are desperate. Just hang tight. I know you're trying to touch the hymn of Jesus. Hold on. Let me at least get the word out. All right? Get the word out. I don't know if any of you can't. I don't think we sit. I think we had standing on. Good. If you fall, then I know it's Jesus. Praise God. Amen. So, I know my beautiful wife's watching. Are we live? I love you, baby. Now, you're on the next trip. You hear me? <laughs> she said to her gods. Gotta love the missus, right? I can't love you guys appropriately if I don't love her. You understand that, right? Yeah. That made me a wicked preacher. We don't need no more of them. All right? We don't need wicked preachers. I don't need to give you no perverse stuff. So, baby. Mm-mm, good. I love you. Amen. Amen. Put things in perspective, you know? Got to make sure Jezebel don't run around. I can handle this. She's going to scream today. <laughs> hey! Yeah. Yeah, she messed with y'all. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we don't like them witches. We like to turn them into prophetesses, right? Yeah. Come on. Jesus. All right. The Lord talked to me and he said, tell them about on earth as it is in yeah. heaven. Mm -hmm. So what's in heaven? Oh. Oh. Yes. So Jesus said that though. He said it right here. Watch. He said, pray like this in Matthew 6, 9 to 13. He said, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. To rescue us from the evil one. You know, this prayer 
is the key to heaven in your life every day. Forgiveness is in it. Expectation is in it. Faith is in it. I'm going to tell you something. If you're here today and you have anything less than heaven in your life, it's a problem. If you have other things other than heaven, we got to fix it. Because right? we're a kingdom people. Now, I don't know. Some people may not be Christians, but you're in the wrong place. You're going to become one. That means a believer. That means you're an alien. Not the E.T. type. You're an ambassador. You're living an epistle. You come from somewhere else. Amen? Amen. All right. And that's where I come from. That's why demons don't like me. Because I'm actually a resident of heaven. So when I show up, demons scream. Because they're like, oh, man, that's one of the residents again. (laughs) You want your name known in heaven, earth, and hell. You want your name known for Jesus' sake. Right? So. Hallelujah. How do you get that to happen? Give him everything. Tell him, Lord, I surrender. I'm all yours. Huh? All right. When Jesus came, guys, he revealed the nature of the kingdom of God through the things that he did here. So Jesus' actions displayed who he was, right? You can always tell where a person's from or what's going on in their life with what's going on around them. The only reason you're here is because you said, hey, I'm watching this social media cat. He's got some stuff going on. And I want the stuff to go on around me. Right? Some of you may even have it. Or you might be here, I want an increase. I want a healing. I want deliverance. Right? You're here because you saw something happening. And you know that there's something going on that you need. It's the only reason you should be here. Unless you're here to like, be a skeptic and prove that is wrong, which is bad. Because you can't prove you might be able to prove me wrong, but you can't prove my God wrong. Right. Every now and then we get a couple of those. You know, they come up and they try my life. And I'm like, bye. <laughs> Mark 14, Mark 1, 14 to 15. It says this. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee where he preached God's good news. The time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Do you believe the kingdom of God is near? Yes. You know, I was talking to a pretty well-known man of God one day, and he said, and I asked him, I said, what is deliverance to you? And he said this, he said, it's, it's, it's the sign that the kingdom of God is near. Isn't that beautiful? So when deliverance is happening, you can rest assured that heaven is on the scene. Huh? And you can celebrate that. So when deliverance and healing's breaking out, you're like, I'm in heaven today. Right? Oh. All right. Guys, Jesus healed, Jesus delivered. He did these things to reveal that where he is from, heaven, right? The realities of these things like sickness and oppression by the devil don't exist. So in heaven, there is no sickness. In heaven, there is no demonic oppression. Amen? He instilled hope in the hearts of people that there was something to come that would be void. The word is void. Null and void. Of the things of sin and darkness. Do you know there will be a time where sin and darkness will have no longer a domain? Or anywhere it can stay. Isn't that cool? Do we not look forward to something like that? Yes. I do. No, I do. Satan has no power in the presence of God. And that presence comes from heaven where he once was also. So catch this. Why do demons get mad? Why do they scream when certain people show up on the scene? Because he can recognize where you come from. Right? And it makes him mad. The demons get mad because they're like, Oh, man, I know that smell. I know that taste. I know that that feels like we can never go back to it. And then when it comes around, it chases us out of town. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. So, the one time Satan was in heaven, he's no longer there anymore. Now he's down here to make our life miserable. That's what he thinks. Until we come to the identity of who Christ has called us to be. Amen? 
Now listen, through the Holy Spirit, we are now able to do the same works or even greater because He lives and moves through us by what? His Spirit. John 14, 12 says this, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. Simple questions today, guys. I'm not going too deep here. Do you desire to do the works of Jesus? Yes. Do you believe you can do greater works? Yes. You know why we can do greater works? Because it's a lot of us. We do a lot greater with a lot of us. Amen? Acts 1a. I know this one by heart. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you, can you look at your neighbor and say, you? You. That's right. Will receive power. a witness of Jesus' goodness until the end of the earth. The key is the power of the poder, the Espiritu Santo. Come on. The power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The fuego de Dios. The power of God. Uh, today we need to become possessed by God. You know what happens when heaven gets on you? You ever think about that? What happens when heaven gets on you? Oof. You're right. A lot happens. Things just change. You get transformed into something you were always meant to be from the foundations of the world. Now listen, if the real power of Jesus Christ is in here today, and if I am a true preacher of his word, then you're in trouble in a good way. One hundred percent reliance on the King of Glory, not on man's strength, not by my strength, but by Your Spirit, says the Lord. I don't know what you came here to see. I hope you didn't come to see a charismatic preacher, but you came to see a man that is madly in love with Jesus and wants to give that same Jesus to everybody here. If you came to see that today, then you're in a good place. Amen? Paul said this, I don't, 1 Corinthians 4.20, I'm not here to speak to you with wise words, but I come to you with a demonstration of God's power. Yeah. Because one thing that nobody can deny it's the power of God. Amen? Amen? All you who are heavy laden and heavy burdened, come to Jesus and he will give you rest. Now, I feel like saying this. I know some of you are in here for deliverance and stuff like that. This requires also this, repentance. You must repent first. Because if you're not, you're going to manifest and say the same. What does that mean? I don't want any of it anymore. I don't want this in my life. I'm done with it. I'm sick of it. I put it down. I don't need it anymore. I need only what Jesus has for me. I don't want to rely on the lustful ways of the world anymore. I only want what Jesus has. Amen? Amen. And nothing less than that. Nothing less. Nothing less. That means this. The relationship some of you may be in, cut it out. The drugs some of you may be doing, that means you're saying, I'll never touch it again. Not go, oh, the temptation. Ah, a dog returns to its vomit. The Bible says, I, this is rough stuff, but I, I'm ready to see real results. I'm ready to see a true transform people. You know what? This is what they teach addicts. Oh, you're, you're always going to go back. Come up here. I'm, an, I'm, I'm, I'm sober for 40 years. Hi, I'm an alcoholic. No, man. Stop saying that. Don't say that stuff. Don't prophesy the death. You will stay that. Because now you may not be drinking, but you're eating all the sugar over on the table. You see what I'm saying? It's just give it over to a different way. Yep. Prophesy who you are through your own mouth. Yeah. 
I'm not a porn addict. I'm not a drug addict. I'm not angry all the time. Speak life. And you'll get the results of what you speak. So many times people speak nasty death sentences over their life. You know, my grandma had cancer. I guess I'm going to no. And they live in fear because of what grandma had. You're from heaven. You understand? If they had it, you don't need to. Once you accept Jesus Christ and what's heaven, what's heaven is your home, you don't have to have that generational stuff. You're attached to a new bloodline. Amen. Am I right? The blood of Jesus runs through our veins. Right? When you get a blood test, you should go be careful. Because this blood might wash you clean. What do you mean? It's the blood of Jesus. True story. I heard a man of God say they checked his blood and they said they never seen blood like that. He said, I know where it comes from. Serious, true story. I heard it. It's crazy. What if we have faith like that? That we know the blood that is in us. If that blood runs through your veins, then diabetes can't be there. If that blood runs through your veins, then your blood pressure shouldn't be shooting up. Now, unless you eat the wrong foods, you got to repent. But you know what I'm saying? What blood runs through your veins? Because last time I checked, it's the blood of Jesus. Yeah. That precious, wonderful blood. You know, I love the blood. The devil hates it. Huh? When the blood is on you, the devil can't touch you. But what are you covered by? Yes. What sanctifies you? Yes. What makes you righteous? Yes. What makes you holy? Yes. What makes you pure? Yes. And today say, I'm covered by the blood. Yes. I release forgiveness to you. I release grace to you. I release mercy to you. I'll be free. Be loose from this snake.